Sometimes movies just don't work, you know? Sometimes all the elements of a movie are there. Mm. They might get a returning director, you know sure. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Someone who's big and hot and huge and cool. Mm. You know, maybe the, the previous movie had done so well and they bring back elements from some of the older movies, some of the quips, some of the gadgets, some of the villains even perhaps. Mm. And then all in all, it's just like, this isn't very good, is it? Now, I mean, in theory, this this idea checks out, but can you give me like an example, like a solid, rock solid example of this happening? Sure. Okay, let me do my intro mm-hmm. because as always, Mason, every yes. Tuesday, we do these Caravan of Garbage videos here where we look mm. at movies or whatever from the past and we go, is this good? And often they're good. Often we'll go through a series and then you get to the last one and you're like, I think this is the worst one by quite a long way. I'm talking about Spectre, Mason, the Whoa. movie Spectre. Please leave a like if you could. Uh, we're wrapping up this particular series at the moment, aren't we? Are you involved in the production of Spectre or, or, or were, you, were, you, uh, were you part of it? Chuck us a like. <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> Do it now before you hear anything we have to say about the movie Spectre. How do you feel about this? Yeah, you're absolutely right in the sense that again they they're like okay, we want we want to funnel this in the direction of like James Bond antics. We want to bring yeah. back some classic elements. Why they left it till the last one? Damage control. Mm. Was it was it course correction? They're like people are going to want they want the Bond cars. They want the henchmen, you know, the Ooh, memorable yeah. henchmen. They want the gadgets, they want the girls, they want all this stuff. Yeah. Too little too late, I think. Yeah. I honestly think that Sam Mendes struck a really good balance with Skyfall. Mm -hmm. I know it's not your favourite, but I think it's a very fun kind of throwback Bond adventure and it's silly and it's big and it's, you know, it's got a bit of the quips and this and that or whatever and there's a Komodo dragon. Sure. Everybody saw that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what they did here, they waited a year for Sam Mendes to return because uh-huh. he was doing other things. And in the meantime, they they went to Christopher Nolan. Went, Christopher Nolan, you made The Dark Knight and we made The Dark Knight also. <laughs> That's right. Uh, would you like to come on board? And he was, you know, apparently, you know, there was some talks there. And also Nolan's also mentioned that maybe he'd do it in like the reboot. You know what I mean? Sure. Okay. Yeah. But Just, in a way, mm-hmm. he's also made it with Tenet. Yes. That's his Bond exactly. movie, you know, and, and, and I guess to some degree... He went, well, you know, I could do a Bond movie, but that's not enough for me. I need an additional... I need a couple non- of backwards boys running amok. Exactly. Espionage. This dialogue be, is too audible. I don't want it to be audible. <laughs> the James Bond movies, the, the one downfall is the, the dialogue is too audible. You can hear everything mm. all the time. But, you know, like, there's a lot of stuff that's technically excellent. Like, the intro is made to look like a one It's like a handful of, like, interconnected oh, shots. I see, yep. mm-hmm. You know, which is yeah, quite yeah. good. Even s- shot on, like, different locations... You know, obviously different times of the year and all that. And it, and it all works as one Different thing. times of the day. Probably. He goes out and <laughs> it goes from one room to the other and it's day and night. Yeah. Uh, you know what? First note, he's gone rogue right away. Straight up. In a way, he's actually gone rogue before the start of the movie, which I think is his record. Yeah. But then he goes rogue again. We'll talk about it towards the end. Okay. But things like the building collapse and he lands on the little couch and that's a... S- some real Mr. Bean shenanigans as far as I'm concerned. He keeps coming back. The idea of this James Bond being Mr. Bean mm. comes around yet again. And that helicopter corkscrew stunt, you know, they, they did it for real. There's a few things in this that are kind of more of a nod to the Roger Moore era. Mm-hmm. Like the skivvy for one. Remember the sure. corkscrew car? Yes. I wish they put in the... <laughs> the slide whistle yeah. like they did in that stunt. He's wearing like a Baron Samedi costume. You know, with the oh, skull yeah, mask yeah, and the top right, hat. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, there's a few things in here that are very Roger Moore-esque. And then, of course, there's like the white tux, which is more like classic James Bond. But Roger Moore, I think, also wore that mm-hmm. at some point, didn't he? But here's, here's, some, here's a question for you. Now, a lot of people, Mason, at the time, they were like, this Sam Smith character, mm. we don't like this new song that they've put together for this movie. Mm. What's wrong with it? I quite like it. It's fine, it's right? It's a bit of a downer, but I think that's and and it and it sort of points towards a you know a melancholy finish. Even if Bond becomes triumphant at the end, you know maybe maybe he's lost it all, etc. That being said, I know you would agree it is not a patch on uh, Radiohead's Spectre, which is the song they submitted. Uh, for for, now, for this movie, and you, I know you're a big fan of Radiohead. Well, famously, I don't have any opinions on Radiohead. Okay, but what do you think about and, this song? And in keeping with that theme, I didn't listen to it oh, intentionally. <laughs> oh my god, it's good. It's great stuff. It's really good, is it? Yeah, it's good. I'll never know. It's a real downer. Uh, this is also the James Bond movie where he's just not old anymore. Remember in the last one, they're like, "You're so old, Bond." And this one, he's doing. Remember, he does a big jump and a roll. <laughs> he jumps like a story, and then just, just does a clean roll, and yeah. he's on his feet and he's off. Mm-hmm. He's just like fucking fifty. Remember the. <laughs> last movie they're like fucking ice down your knees bond you old piece of shit but this it's just i don't know what he's been doing mm. but he's fine i also enjoy how he lives like he's in a college dorm you know what i mean yeah, just... He's ne- he just never got beyond that 
It just uh, just a mattress on the floor <laughs> and a Donnie Darko poster. <laughs> but I think that also points to the character of James Bond, or this one in particular. He doesn't really care about like the finer things, or anything, or really. anything, or anyone. Proper lighting in his apartment. What's put in his blood? Do you reckon he'd be anti-vax? Let's not get into it. But he's okay. <laughs> yeah. With smart blood. How do you feel about smart blood? I'm not a fan of smart blood. <laughs> not for me. But it's interesting because remember they already put a tracking device in his exactly, arm, Casino yeah. Royale. I imagine it's just they, they needed to replace it because maybe he chewed it out. <laughs> like, like a, a wild animal. Yeah. <laughs> Chew this out, Bond. Oh, my God, he is. <laughs> Here's something I am a big fan of, though, for this movie and just Bond in general. Mm. I love Bond taking a trip to the snow because he gets all yeah. these snow outfits, you know? Mm, sure. And that's, of course, where he meets uh, Mr. White's daughter, the returning Mr. White. He's back to be like, there's a secret. <laughs> Talk about it. But <laughs> Madeline Swan. There's a secret. It's called Lamericane. I mean, you could Google it, mate. Is that a man? Look, just look into it. Just, just, just Google it, or maybe find an old Lonely Planet guidebook. It'll yeah, be yeah, in there, yeah. I think. You'll figure it out. Yeah, how Madeline you, Swan. Yeah, how do you feel? Ah, uh, I don't see any of that. Oh, you don't see any chemistry, chemistry at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like mean, of the person to give it all up for for a second time to pack it all in. Yeah, nothing, nothing against not uh, at all. Nothing against Leah Sedu. Oh, she's great. The uh, the heir to the Sedu fortune. Wow. Why even act? Just wait for that money to roll in. Yeah. Imagine how many euro that would be. So many euro. So many euro. Uh, but I just, I don't, I don't. You don't feel like feel chemistry? It at all. Yeah. Maybe there'll be more in the new one, which we haven't seen. Yeah, yet. that is true. And something <laughs> that I am here for though Go is on. the return of M on a little screen where she's just like. Um, I need you to kill this man and then go to the funeral and just see what's up. And and if that's you get, so helpful. Thanks. And if you get a minute, bang his wife. <laughs> <laughs> this it's a direct order, Bond. Was that was that what she meant? She could have been like secret organization. This guy's at this and whatever mm. and whatever. Like no, just maybe she was just a bit sus on the whole thing. She might have been. She's like, this is my last my last will and testament to you, Bond. The last thing I say before I die. Mm. I think there was something up with that guy. <laughs> Just log into it. If there's nothing, don't worry about it. <laughs> no worries if not. Okay, bye, Bond. I'm okay. dead now. <laughs> when did I record this? I don't know. Well, apparently you can light it up with Skyfall. Like she's wearing the same clothes and it's in the same location. Okay. So they, they, don't worry. They figured it out, Mason. Sure. That's one thing you cannot criticise this film for. And no, I can. Yeah, yeah, right. I can unjustly <laughs> criticise anything and I do regularly. Well, I'm looking for you to unjustly criticise this, Mason, because after many illegal wranglings, they finally got back the rights to the organisation of Spectre. Kevin McClory, the owner of the rights. Yes. He died. Yeah. So of? Bought, um, spite, I think. Yeah, got him in the end. Yeah. Gets us all though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So what I think's hilarious about this is it's like, you know how there was that unbelievable secret organisation that nobody knew about? Well, guess what? There's an even more secret organisation yeah. on top of that you one. You double won't <laughs> recognise this secret organisation. You double don't know it exists. And with that, we get a few people uh, joining the ranks of Spectre. We get C, uh, the hot priest, mm -hmm. and he's obviously from Sherlock. He's also transparently evil, so much so that it's in the trailer where you see him scuffling with M. <laughs> they, right. they put that in the trailer. Maybe that was just a standard disagreement in, in a, <laughs> you know, in an office environment. It happens all the time. You're right. You're absolutely right. Um, and also, but I mean, if, if that's not Andrew Scott's fault. No, he just, he's great. He just it's has terrific. he just has a sinister hairline. Mm. It's not his fault. I you're also right. have a sinister hairline. I also have a sinister hairline. Right? Uh, then we get Mr. Hinks. Mm. Uh, Which I feel is an attempt to give us a kind of Jaws-esque yes. villain, but they were like, well, we can't give him, you know, metallic teeth. That would be too silly. So yeah. let's make him robo-thumbs. Why would... it's? But I think it's just metal thumbnails. I think it is. I think There's they're nothing, supposed to be sharp. Just make him Jaws. Just make him Jaws. You brought back Blofeld. Mm. He can just be Jaws. People and would love it if they brought back Jaws, I think. I agree. Yeah. Oh, there were rumours that they were going to. And the other thing is, first of all, I don't think Dave Batista would do this now. No. He's like well beyond just being like a very minor player. Yeah, a, a mute killer. Yeah. yeah. At the same time, mm. you know, the chance to be in a Bond movie, why wouldn't you? Apparently a big fan, yeah. so maybe he would have done it regardless. But he does like a silent neck snap, which I'm never a fan of. Mm. Weak. Poor. And, it, and and when Bond and, and uh, Madeline Swan are on the train, they're having dinner. Yeah. His first move upon like approaching them because he wants to kill Bond is to like kick out the table between them. <laughs> Shoot Bond in the back of the head. Yeah. What are you doing? He wants a scuffle. Right. And more importantly, I want a scuffle. Because I think that fight, which is also reminiscent of the one that Connery had on a train. In from Russia with love? With Red Grant, yeah. Yeah. I think that fight's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's quite good. But of course, the big the big main player, the big bad, he's back. Yeah. Uh, last time we saw him, he was being... <laughs> 
tilted into a smokestack by Roger Moore. That's right. <laughs> in, uh, for you your didn't see his movie. face. Nobody mentions his name because, once again, yeah. legally they weren't allowed to use him. He was just a bald man. That's right. And he did turn up unofficially in Never Say Never Again. That's true. Uh, but it turns out that Blofeld... He's been behind it the whole time. And not only that, he is the half-brother of James Bond. God. And not only that, he was jealous of James Bond because his dad taught James Bond how to ski and he didn't, he didn't like that, so he killed his parents. And then he decided to make a, a secret organisation. Then he was like, guess what? I'm not really Franz Oberhauser, you fool. Did you not know that I am, I am Obadiah Blofeld? Whatever the fuck his name is. Sure. Sorry, his name. Yeah. And Bond's like, great. Yeah, I I hate it when like, and I understand every you know everybody wants to tie everything together in, in a neat little package, but I just hate the idea of like all these completely disparate enemy forces. I did them all. Yeah, you know that rope hitting your balls. I was behind that. That was me. Mm. Yeah, that reveal also felt like that. My name is Khan. Reveal from oh, yeah. Into Darkness. It's like you're only talking to the audience, and I guess in a way, all movies are talking to the audience. You know what I mean? Sure, but it in just a way, felt like... with the visual language <laughs> <Yeah>. of cinema. <laughs> And then he gives him some torture. He's like, I'm going to improve on the torture mm. of my predecessor. Yeah. By it's, a, it's an electronic drill, and it drills into your memories, and then you're not going to have any memories. And you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin your balance, and it's going to do everything. And then immediately afterwards, once they escape, <laughs> it's, it's just very handy that immediately after your brains have been drilled, you can still move and fight like a man who hasn't had your brains drilled. Yeah. Well, not only that. He planned to wipe out James Bond's facial awareness. His facial recognition software would be oh, no. offline. Yeah. But I remember when we covered this movie for our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows and it comes out every Monday, you had an interesting idea of what they actually could have done with that James Bond facial blindness thing. Well, they you- could have turned him into the weird misogynist that he's always been in all the other movies. Exactly. If he can't recognise any women, they're all the same to him. Yep. You know, I, th- I th- kind of thought that's where it was going. Like, maybe Madeline Swan would survive at the end and be like, who are you? Yeah. Are you Eva Green? Are you Dominic Green? Yeah. <laughs> so I just think kind of nothing in the end. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. then they run away and then and there's and there's the, the big explosion or whatever. The biggest ever on screen. Uh, and to its credit, it's very big. It's a very big explosion. Pretty big. And I will not take it away from the explosion. Mm. How big it Has is. Has it been topped since, I wonder? Oh, who cares? No one knows. How do you feel about Blofeld getting his Blofeld face? I mean... <laughs> I mean, it had to happen, didn't it? Why would he yeah. not get his Blofeld face? But it's good to know we saw the origin of the Blofeld face. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's great, isn't it? You know, he got his Blofeld face right off, didn't he? I enjoy he? the fact that at the end of the movie... Oh, the finale, uh, the big finish! Just just despite the fact that Bond literally has a license to kill, he's absolutely killed people for less. Yeah. He doesn't kill Blofeld, because I guess... Why? He's aware that Blofeld is a main villain in a previous continuity... And he might need to come back for sequels, so... Yeah, exactly. What, what are they going to do, invent a new memorable nemesis instead? Very unlikely. What I love about that finale in the in the, MI, in the old burnt-out MI6 building, mm. it's an overly complicated setup that was clearly done in a rush. I'll buy the producers, <laughs> you think? No, no, I mean the, the villains involved. Because they're like, quickly, spray paint James Bond on the wall <laughs> of dead agents. Just put an arrow on here. Just Xerox some faces of some yeah. people that he knows. Don't worry about Mr. Greed. Just, we don't need him. <laughs> Bond can fight and run and reason even after his brain has been drilled, but Blofeld gets a mere whiff of an explosion to the face and the best he can do is just pop down to, like, staples and get some (laughs) photocopying done. And I also think it's really strange how he's like, James Bond, I've uh, I've put I've put your the love of your life in second love, I guess, uh, in this building somewhere, and there's going to be an explosion. I'm going to set it off in three minutes, and James Bond's like, you're bluffing. Why would he? Mm. Why would this be a bluff? Why would he be like, no, nah, you're right, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> arrest me. Mm. Like, come on. And also, if I may, uh, is this I- about the big net? I mean, we'll get to the big net, <laughs> but. If I may, uh, were I the antagonist of this sort of movie, yeah. giving someone three minutes to escape your deadly trap is two minutes too long. I agree. I could have done that in three minutes. <laughs> you know your way around a building. You just bond. run around until just run around. you hear someone yelling. Mm, and then you're like, cool. And then you go. jump into that big net. The big net at the bottom. Maybe I missed it. Was there set up for the big net? Yeah, all the construction workers, they jump into the big net at the end of their shift. <laughs> okay. Yeah, when they like were building that building. Yeah, like their Fred Flintstone slides, yeah, 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 sliding yeah, yeah. down yeah, a yeah. dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm serious. And the net's like, it's a living. <laughs> no, I'm serious though. Is the net mentioned or seen? It must be. Because I kind of watch this know. with one eye because it's You're very right. dull and long. Oh, yes. If, if you know what's up with the net, please let me. Maybe it's for like they're throwing stuff out of the building. It's like the easiest way to like... 
<laughs> collect stuff and you throw it into a big net at the bottom. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. No, I don't know. I just don't know what's up with a big net. Mm. Um, and and anyway, and then and Blofeld's off down the Thames. That's right. A thrilling boat chase up the Thames. Mm. Maybe don't go just straight up the Thames. Maybe you fly. Maybe go away. So Bond, who's who's <laughs> restricted shoot himself to a boat, <laughs> uh, can't shoot shoot it at you. But I mean, good on him. It's lucky that he can hit a moving helicopter from a moving speedboat with like one of the tiniest guns in the world. That is lucky. Do you also believe that this guy would retire under these circumstances for this woman that he doesn't really know or seem to like? Or remember, maybe. I still think he might be scrambled. He did get drilled in the brain, yeah. so maybe, yeah. I don't know. Mm. I just don't, I don't believe that he would walk away at this point in time. Yeah. Maybe he got enough kills under his belt. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason he didn't kill Blofeld is he's like, he's doing his monologue about how I'll you'll get justice another way, Blofeld or whatever, but in his head he's like, Oh, I killed 100 dudes. All right, I don't need to do any more. That's check it off the bucket list. Also, I'm curious. Do you think he can even kill anybody in, in England? Because he's MI6. He's not MI5. Oh. Maybe he's not even allowed to hold a gun. What does license to kill mean, though? Good question. Well, isn't M like at one point? License to kill doesn't mean that you can mm. kill whoever you want. It's also about who you don't kill. For example, don't kill me. <laughs> please don't. I know you're thinking. I can see it in your shark eyes. Don't kill me, please. Oh, God. I don't think license to kill is about who you don't kill. I think it's more Mostly about... about who you do kill, yeah? <laughs> I don't know. If I had to put my finger on it. Can I give you some miscellaneous notes before we... If you could. Okay, cool. Um, I think it's rude that uh, James Bond made Money Penny uh, go to his flat after hours. Yeah, that's true. She's not rude. getting paid for that. Yeah. Um, she doesn't work for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not your um, secretary. I like there was a classic... In, during the car chase, I think there's a classic bit of bystander comedy. There's a little man in his little Fiat. And he's, and he's, oh, and he's, yeah. he's listening to the opera and he doesn't know the action's happening behind him. That's some Roger Moore stuff. I'm and enjoying remember, that. And yep. remember when you crashed just a little bit and he's like, phew, I've bloody got out of this one. Yeah. Little does he know he's about to get his nose broken by an airbag. By stand comedy. <laughs> I liked how Q got his little action sequence. Yeah. Uh, at one point, uh, Bond uh, says to a porter on the train, would you press this for me? And I'm like, it's not a dry cleaners, mate. It's a dry <laughs> What are you? What are you doing? I would have, if I was that porter, I would have chucked it out a window. Yeah, be like, sorry, we wrecked it. Yeah, you will not get your money back. I have a license to just ignore people yeah. who are a prick to me. Um, it's interesting to me that uh, after the fight on the train, they mm. just got to stay on the train. Yeah, but I, I like to think that maybe they got kicked off the train for starting fights and general mischief. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what it was. That is true. How many carriages did they tear through? Hey, all of them, I think. <laughs> um, I've got a note here that says... Just end to end. <laughs> yeah. I've got a note here that says, in my mind, the goofy guy who welcomes them to the Spectre compound yep. and the goofy guy who officiates the poker game in Casino Royale, they're best friends. Oh. They have adventures together. Can we also throw in the goofy guy with the wig? The coconut shell wig? Oh, from, yeah, From definitely. Quantum of Souls? Yeah, he's into. Yeah, right, yeah. Terrific. They're the modern day Three Stooges. <laughs> um... They made Bond and Blofeld brothers like it would be thematically significant in some way instead of being the same twist they used in Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah. What you, what, 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 you, what, what? Yeah. Come on. We also failed to mention that uh, apparently a big part of them rebooting was because of the Austin Powers movies also. Yeah. So they're like, they've made fun of us. They've made, they're making fun of us. <laughs> hey. Hey. Mm. We're fun and cool. I mean, these movies, it's harder to make fun of them because they're not as interesting. <laughs> or this one in particular. Yeah, definitely. I, you know what I did like? Uh, when uh, when C goes to kill M, yep. pulls the gun out of the drawer and the gun's empty. Fun little callback to Casino Royale. That's I right. thought it was actually quite good. And now we know what C stands for. Cunt fucking kids. How did he know that? I mean, maybe it's just a common trick Maybe it's a th <laughs> that psychopaths use. Maybe it's page one in the MI6 manual. Yeah. Yeah, you should have read the manual. Yeah. See? You should be able to tell by the weight of the gun. But then again, see, he's a pencil pusher. He's a pencil pusher. He doesn't, know the, doesn't know, know the weight of a gun. We don't know the weight of a gun. If a bloody... M's been in the field. Yeah. M's been in the field, maybe. Mm. Probably had a beautiful full head of hair that he was using at one point to seduce everybody. That's right. Yeah. It was whittled away by bullets. <laughs> Ropes. <laughs> Ropes, yeah. Uh, that's, all I, that's all my notes I have. I love everything about that, Mason. You made some excellent points. And Thank allow you. me to drive us down, uh, because I'm, I'm actually legally allowed to do this because I do have a license to trivia. Oh, yeah, nice. I'm going to do that right now okay, here we for go. the final time. Pierce Brosnan spoke to Hitflix at the time this movie was coming out, and he said, I was looking forward to it enormously. I thought it was too long. Do you like my Pierce Brosnan? It was really good, yeah. The story was kind of weak. It could have been condensed. It kind of went on too long. It really did. It is neither fish nor fowl. <laughs> it's neither Bond nor born. Am I in a Bond movie? Not in a Bond movie? But Daniel, uh, in the fourth go around, has ownership of it, etc., etc. Says a bunch of nice things about Daniel Craig and reckons that he's one of the best, etc. So now come and see me in Mamma Mia. <laughs> 
Here we go again. Here we go. What do you think about your beard? One of the eyes seen in the opening credits is actually Karen Gillan. Uh, she has expressed interest in playing a Bond villain so she could lick Daniel Craig's head, apparently. Tremendous. Yeah. Wait, just one eye. Apparently. Did she ask to be in it? How'd that work? Was she fa- super famous then? Yeah, I mean, 2015. Oh, yeah, so, cool. Yeah. Uh, Monica Belushi, at age 51, became the oldest Bond woman Good at that her. point. She also she auditioned for the role that Terry Hatcher got in... I'm going to take over the world because I have all the newspapers. Yes. So there you go. Radiohead something something. I put that in. Yeah, it was, nice. it was deemed. It was rejected because it was too dark, mm. which I wouldn't know. Because is that what Radiohead do? Are they are they a, are they a dark band? This guy. I'm just thinking about it, and I don't actually want to know the answer. This guy is missing out on his birthright. Being a dude <laughs> who knows about Radiohead has opinions about Radiohead. Uh, got a new thing out. I'm not sure what it is, <laughs> but it's on PlayStation or something. <laughs> PlayStation, is it? Yeah. Great. Uh, and last bit of trivia, and I think this is interesting because these are the titles that are left. Oh, as in the, the Ian the Fleming books, novels. Yeah, sure. that haven't been used. Uh, we mentioned uh, Risico, of course, in, in mm. our in our video game adventure. Uh, the Property of a Lady. Oh. Uh, the Hildebrand Rarity. Mm. And, of course, most famously, 007 in New York. <laughs> nice. I think Risico is vague enough they could use that, Sure, right? yeah, yeah. I think people might confuse it with Sicario, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, how about this? 007. Mm-hmm. Pig in New York. <laughs> 007 goes to hell. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, he would go to hell, too, wouldn't he? Definitely. And he'd kill everyone there. Yeah. And then he'd rule over hell. <laughs> Anyways, we're up to our, uh, our famous segment uh, that we didn't really name, but it's about... Um, it's about whether or not he goes rogue. How, mm. Is it too late to name it this? Does he use his brogues to go rogue? I said, is it too late? Brogues being a shoe that he might wear. Mm. Does he wear a brogue? He very rarely wears a brogue. But he has? I don't think Daniel Craig has. But as another version of James Bond, want a brogue. I can't confirm <laughs> or deny. Doesn't, you know, he'd be more of an Oxford man. Does he use his Oxfords to go rogue? Is that better? Yes, James. <laughs> okay. He probably uses his Oxfords to go rogue. Okay. So we mentioned up top, he's already gone rogue. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he's technically on the job, but he's gone rogue. But then later in the movie, he chooses yet again to go rogue. Mm-hmm, that's correct. He steals the car and he goes rogue. But do you think it still counts as going rogue when M comes around to him going rogue? Is that M going rogue? That's M also going rogue, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's a bad influence. <laughs> so it's too. like that friend at school who's getting you to smoke cigarettes. He got the other M to go rogue as well. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I should stick around. He's like, no, nah, come to a country house. We'll go rogue together. And the other aspect of it is, of course, does he retire? Yes. yes. But not before stealing a car, which was only a steering wheel. But then they make they made it back, didn't mm-hmm. they? Yeah. It's mm-hmm. nice that uh, Q put all the guns back in. He even upgraded some of the stuff in the next movie. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate him. Oh, my goodness. It's good to get back into a James Bond video game. This one is unique, Mason. In what way? Well, because the movie Spectre was without a James Bond release, right? I thought you were going to say the movie Spectre was without a James Bond. (laughs) No, no, he was in it. I'm I'm quietly confident that he was in that movie. Great, great, great. Okay. So this game features a standalone Daniel Craig voiced adventure. It's got Dame Judi Dench. Yes. It's got Joss Stone. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh... Which might be why it's called Bloodstone. We'll talk about that. It's not really clear why it's called Bloodstone. But the you o- think it was a Friday afternoon <laughs> in the game development studio? They didn't have a name left? Yeah. They're like... Just Stone, Bloodstone. Yeah, close enough, that'll know. do it, yeah. What do you think of that Dame Judi Dench? Craggy. Cra- well, it's 2010, Mason. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this was... And she was at the height of her cragginess. <laughs> so <laughs> She might have just been. Yeah. She's this Australian flag in the background. You see that? Well, this is uh, this is some kind of Greece situation. I don't know if you saw. We're in we're in Athens. Mm-hmm. Uh, terrorist something something. Okay. Bioweapon, chemical. Maybe it's nanotechnology. And the only people who can stop it are the diggers. <laughs> Australia's own armed forces. That's right. Tim Minchin, the guy who does the Chopper Reed comedy. Heath Franklin, yes. Yeah, uh, Dickie Knee. Yep. <laughs> the trio. Our <laughs> sure. fighting force. That's exactly right. Our yes. boys on the front line. That's right. We salute him. The thing about this game is it's a fairly competent third-person shooter slash stealth kind of situation. Okay. You do a little bits and pieces like Splinter Cell-esque kind of takedowns. Mm-hmm. You get data off computers and phones. Love data. It invents literally nothing, but it does... Quite a bit right of the from the things that it borrows from. Can you do the uh, the classic Splinter Cell system of if you really want to, you can just punch your way through the whole thing? <laughs> yes, Great. and I will demonstrate that to you in Punches this game. Punches only. Yeah. So I think. Oh, does it do the thing? <laughs> mm. Does it do the mark and execute thing? 
Yeah. And but to build it up, you have to punch people. It's to, exactly to what it does. To build up Bond's confidence, yes. so that he can mark and execute. I don't think this Bond has ever needed confidence. No, he's not <laughs> lacking in confidence, is he? If anything, he'd probably dial the murder back a little bit. That's it. Is so, he just jumping in his civvies? No, no, he's got a backpack filled with his lunch. Oh, great! <laughs> great. You know he does it. Yeah, he's just going to power bomb on that helipad. Yeah. Nice. So what I love about this game in particular, I think the best thing it does is the opening. Mm. And you'll see why. Because it kind of gives you all the things that you're going to be doing mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the span of about 15 minutes, right? Like a tutorial. Like a tutorial, but it doesn't really kind of hold your hand through it. <laughs> you <know laughs> that guy's I mean? dead. Yeah, I shot him. And that's cool. It is cool, actually. Uh, yeah. And also I should point out, for the most part, for a game that was clearly like rushed towards the end and you know that yeah. cut a lot of corners very competently made and looks quite good that's a good looking floor texture yeah. i'll tell you that much i'll tell you what i don't like so much What's that bond here just wearing his wearing his jeans and a, and a windbreak <laughs> or whatever you know i was just thinking yeah. you know we never saw this this daniel craig bond do what's that wear the naval uniform yeah it's true right it's one of my faves and, and here it is you you know Perfect uh, opportunity. Perfect opportunity. Daniel Craig cannot refuse it because you just, <laughs> just just do it digitally anyway. This, put him in his put him in his navy whites. I mean, this is a civilian boat, but maybe he'd commandeer it. Just be like, Commander Bond here to take over. And they're like, what? what? I guess, okay. <laughs> the <laughs> naval strippogram has arrived. <laughs> By parachute as requested. Now you're all dead. <laughs> you know, get him. Get him while they're surprised. Get him while they're surprised. Wow, you thought you were going to use that computer, but now you're dead. Yeah, that's right. Ah, uh, you thought you were going to... Get me dead, but now you're dead. <laughs> so you know, nice burgundy a, shirt, idiot. I agree. What are you in the IT department? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> uh, <gasps> a door. That's right. So this, this is, guy. This is one of the villains. One of the things this game lacks. Is this Blued Stone? The uh, villain of the Blood piece? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. It's one of the minor villains. There's a guy who turns up later called Rack. Oh, this is Mr. Scarf. Yes, that's right. Okay, right. Mr. Scarf and Scar now. That's a new Scar. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, just yeah. gotten just now. <laughs> yeah. Her scarf and scowl. Yeah, because I don't know if you remember. I, I think you. I think you might. Uh, when we did the game, I think every, I won't. Uh, when we did the game, everything or nothing, mm -hmm. which is a there Pierce Brosnan bond yes. adventure. Yes, they got Willem Dafoe for the villain. Yeah, and even though they got name actors for this, they didn't get anybody kind of known or even make the villain very interesting. I see. So it kind of lacks direction. You don't know what the bloodstone is. They never tell you. Oh, maybe so, it's your oh, stone. So um. Oh, but is it, a, is it a MacGuffin that people are looking for? Maybe. Oh, so you don't even see it? <laughs> no, you don't see it. It could be like the, the there's a stone in the, a knife you see later. It could be a reference to Joss Stone, who does the song for this. It could be the expression, getting blood from a stone, <laughs> which perhaps might be representative of asking the writers what they meant by bloodstone. That's a great question. It's like getting blood from a stone because I'll never bloody tell you. <laughs> that guy had a rocket launcher. You he did. That? You see that? He's got to blow up this boat. Whoa. Don't How's Bond going to get out of this one? Oh, a big jump. You forgot he was James Bond. I did forget that. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You just go, it, Whenever you think I'm in any kind of danger, just remember I'm James Bond. Okay. Um, um, and this is a fairly scripted um, sequence at the start. Yeah. You can die. Like, mm. Don't get me wrong. I'm not very good at video games and I may die. James, are you going to hit R2 to accelerate at any point? I am accelerating. Mm, I don't know. I hope people can't hear my uh, my controller rattling away, the dual shock controller, because oh. I can certainly hear it from where I am. So I apologise. Apologies if uh, your your <laughs> phone or TV or other uh, tablet device is just rattling. Just rattling off just the wall. Just rattling your teeth <laughs> in, your, in, your, in your lounge room. Uh, but we, we refuse to apologise. Let me turn it off. Uh, you can take this out, Lawrence. I'll leave it in. I don't give a shit. I don't care about anything. Whoa. That's the kind of guy that I am, Mason. Whoa. There we go. Save changes? Yes, please. Yeah, nice. This is the kind of thing you should do before you do a Let's Play. But let's let's press on. Let's press on. Here we go. If you missed that vibration, uh, F, in the, F in the chat. <laughs> the vibration, it's gone now. <laughs> so see what I mean Why it looks pretty good? I'm liking the water on the lens. Yeah. You know, this is a great bit. Fun. The helicopter swoops through. To, it's not, like, there's not even a real lens, James. Yeah. This is a computer game. <laughs> That's right. None of this is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Not in real time. And not even in... if it were happening, oh, wow. they're I'd be... fictional characters. Yeah, exactly. There's two, there's two layers. Simulation <laughs> and simulacra, James. <laughs> it's all our, the Matrix talk has broken my brain. It seems what even way, is reality? It? it doesn't matter at this point, does it? Mm. Oh, no. Big stunt, maybe? Yeah. There we go. What do you think yeah. of that for a big stunt? I mean, speaking of Willem Dafoe, I think he was in that lighthouse and you killed him. <laughs> Didn't you already die in that movie? No. Oh, maybe. It, yeah. Some, oh, some, that's right. Yeah. Somebody. Spoilers. Who cares? <laughs> Robert Pattinson. If you haven't seen. Yeah. If you haven't seen the lighthouse, well, 
Luckily, you tuned into this video and now you know how it yeah. ended. And don't be like, I was going to see The Lighthouse. Are uh, you watching this video? Yeah, come on. The demographics <laughs> do not cross over at all. If you're, you're watching, watching two absolute <laughs> morons. If you're watching uh, a video on the movie Spectre, and then you're watching within that the video game <laughs> Bloodstone, which is unrelated to the movie Spectre, then look. <laughs> which features a sequence where the man switched off the vibration in his controller. <laughs> you weren't going to see the lighthouse. You've had your chance, all right? That's anyway, it. big time explosion time. That yeah, was fun. That's right. Yeah. So uh, this guy thinks it's done. He's like, I'm loving what's happened here. All my mm. men have done a good job. My scarf is looking great. That's right. My scar, even more so. Mm. His name was Scarf and Scar. Right? It's my old villain, Scarf and Scar. I love it. See, they think they got him, yeah, yeah, but they've forgotten. Mm -hmm. That he's James Bond. James Bond, yeah. yeah. In fact, someone probably didn't even know he was James Bond. <laughs> well, he didn't get a chance to introduce himself. No, that's he true. just murdered his way through that boat. Yeah. Like he was fucking Captain America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who's known for murders on a boat. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Here we go. Now it's serious. You thought jet I was joking time? before? No, it's... Uh, he's not going to drive that jet, scre get jet skis <laughs> through the streets. <laughs> he could. Yeah. That's the kind of man that he is. That's right. That's a very Brosnan move to just drive a jet ski. Oh yeah, totally. On, on a road, <laughs> through somebody's shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have insurance. <laughs> All the garden gnomes do a wink. <laughs> There's garden gnomes in the shop. That's of what the shop they are. is selling. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that beautiful water in there. It's looking good, isn't it? Mm. Change up this weapon. Let's we'll do. Machine oh, wouldn't gun. you just love to get a cocktail in whatever this place is? Yeah, it does yeah. look good. Well, it's Athens. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a beautiful place. If you've ever That's been, right. yeah. if you get the time. Mm. Oh, look out! Gotcha. Gotcha. Got this guy too. Got two guys. That's all right. Not a problem. James Bond. Excuse me. Excuse me, everybody. Oh, ma'am. So, oh. so this studio was actually shut. Oh, don't cover up on my account, ma'am. Oh. This studio was actually shut I'm Roger down. Moore now. Oh. <laughs> the video game studio. Yeah. So what actually happened? Um, Crunch? They well, Probably. They released this game the same day as Goldeneye Reloaded for some reason. Why would they uh, do that? Which was a much more popular property. But uh, not that, and that's a different, that would be a different game studio. No, they're both Activision though. Oh yeah, they are. So, uh, so it killed it. It didn't get great yeah. reviews. I think it's like a solid seven, you know? Yeah, right. And so I think it did get a bit of a bum rap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I better hide because people are shooting at me. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, I may be James Bond, but. No. But, I, but I mean, even James Bond has to, you know, hide in a bit of cover behind a car briefly <laughs> until he's not riddled with bullets anymore. That's right. I mean, there must have been somebody in the Activision offices going like, you know what? Synergy. You know what? People yeah. will... It, it's going to be a James Bond extravaganza. The, the kids are going to go out there and they're going to buy two James Bond games at the same time and enjoy them equally at exactly the same yeah. time. And failing to to realise that, no, everybody's just going to buy Goldeneye. Because that's right. that's the only game that anybody has any fond memories of. Well, not me, Mason, but yes, in general, I, yeah. I would agree. And I think also what this one does well, again, it's just it's just generally a good thir third-person shooter, unlike the Quantum of Solace game, mm -hmm. which we looked at, which was a first-person shooter and then a third-person shooter yeah. for, for some reason. That's right. And mechanically, I think it's fine, but yeah. this, I think, is a much more... It feels more James Bondy yeah. than just like just a run and gun. Mm. Even though this is very run and gun. I absolutely knew there was going to be a car chase here because <laughs> there just happened to be an Aston Martin just parked in this guy's garage. I'm yeah. like, of course he's gonna, you know. That's exactly it. I'm, I mean, but but before I get in this Aston Martin, I will pick up all my Sony Ericsson device, <laughs> secrete them about my person. All right, here That's we go. It. The reception's so good. Yeah, I know, right? Now is this going to be a is this a um a James Bond style Aston Martin? No, with gadgets and guns. It's, and stuff? it's not no. because this is pre Spectre. Yeah. Even though you're watching it in a Spectre video, don't don't mm. be mistaken. Even though you're watching it in Spectrovision. Wow, what does that mean? It's like from the 60s or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's probably true. But um, <laughs> geez, <laughs> that's never happened before. Wow. Normally if you hit a car, it stops and you lose. No. Uh, this is actually the sequence that I'm worst at. So I'm surprised that I'm doing this well. But be So the people behind this, though, they did the Blur franchise. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, the people. No, Mason. So many You're thinking people. of the band. Oh, oh no. Oasis. That, this is this is bad. I'm probably going to. Uh, no, you're doing, you're doing really nah, well. It's over. I mean, it's over. It's going to reset me. <laughs> okay. I feel bad about that. Mm. I feel bad that I let everybody down. Mm. But so Blur, in addition, you were talking about Blur, uh, Blur the Band. Yes. But I happen to know that Blur is also the name of a racing game franchise as well. <laughs> yes, that's right. By this studio. Exactly. So that's, uh, you know, that's an interesting fact for you. If you could stop talking about Blur for five minutes. <laughs> so I think um, it does... Oh, God, not again. <laughs> let me through, truck! Ah! I, just, I just keep shoving this giant truck. 
Great, great work there. <laughs> Again, this is the bit I'm worst at. It is kind of on rails mm. in a way because, you know, their scripted events happen. Yeah, yeah. But the driving isn't tight enough, like, to uh, or go for long enough to get the proper hang of it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, right, right, So right. I feel like these are always, this has always been the bit that I kind of fall down in. Mm. Also, I should just take my finger off the accelerator. I was going to say, yeah, and maybe look at the obvious uh, <laughs> obvious patterns that are happening. You swerve left, you swerve right, you swerve left again. Mason, I'm, yes. not, a, I'm not a cars guy. You know that about that's me. That's true, that's true. I've never even seen cars two or three, you know? Yep, I do. I do. Here we go. I think, I've, I think I've bloody nailed it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, so what happened also, it came out in like the, the peak game season in 2010. Oh, yes. Which also killed it. So Lawrence is going to put up some of the big games that also came out around the same time. Whoa, and, and no, Super Mario Land on the Game Boy? Potentially. Whoa. I'm not sure. I did oh look it God. up, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, the thing, about, the thing about that is no one's like... Well, I could, you know, play a very popular ad successful franchise that, you know, that, that I'm going to get 30 hours out of or another James Bond game called Goldeneye. Or I could play this game that goes for like six hours that people say is fine. Yeah, right. You know, uh, sure. And I think, you know, you should give this one a chance. Honestly, it's if you're a fan. Gotcha. Oh, one hit. Yeah, that's all I need, One hit mate. wonder, unlike Blur, yeah. the band Blur. <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, if you play this game and you're not me, you can't do that that easily. That's one of the things that I've managed to just nail down. You've huh. got to hit that car 110 times. But again, wow. I'm, I'm a bit practised. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And how are you gonna, how's anybody going to disagree? They're going to crack open their PlayStation 2 or whatever this is? <laughs> PlayStation 3, <laughs> Mason. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so it actually was going to also have a... Oh, it's over, by the way. We can just watch this beautiful cutscene. Oh, scene. my goodness. Uh, so it was going to have a sequel called James Bond uh, Risico, which is the name of one of the Ian Fleming novels, yeah, uh -huh. one of the original ones. And Raven Software were going to do it, who did the, the Jedi Academy Jedi Knight games. Oh. Or the last two. Okay. Um, the, the thing is, though, that one, there was a bit of footage that was leaked for it, but they ended up taking all the James Bond games off digital stores in 2013 Oh, because Activision's license was revoked. Ah. License to something, something. Mm. The, the joke? License to thrill. There we go. Mm. License to give us all you, give us the, give us the games back. <laughs> Please. Essentially. Yeah. So you can only get this on older physical systems if you are looking for it. And again, you can get it pretty cheap if you are interested. I think of all the games that we have looked at, this is the best. And the shortest. Which to me is uh <laughs> Pretty much, know. yeah. It's pretty much there we the go. best, yeah. What'd you think? Oh, he just shot that woman. <laughs> so he shot that woman. He'll shoot a woman. Yeah. You know that about him. I do, it's true. Anyway, if anyone, know, if anyone knows definitively what the bloodstone is, is it any of these diamonds? Which yeah. one? Is it that magical gem that James Bond holds that means he can instantly heal himself <laughs> if he hides behind a car? <laughs> that he constantly refers to in the game as yeah. my precious, precious bloodstone? Do you think that's it? It could be it, If yeah. it is, comment in the, in the comments below. Please let us know. Uh, so reportedly, the budget of this movie was $350 million but that was said to be exaggerated. It was probably closer to 245 million. I reckon it's probably closer to 350 million. <laughs> You're probably right. So yeah, despite this, you know, not being super successful, mm -hmm. it did have a pretty solid box office at 879 million dollars. So when I said it wasn't super successful, mm -hmm. it was super successful. But the producers were a bit disappointed because it wasn't received very well, mm -hmm. and of course. It didn't make as much as Skyfall, uh, which is obviously a better movie. Anyways, we've made our way through these movies and we've played some terrific and not so terrific video games. We've had some laughs. We've talked about one of our favourite James Bonds of all time, probably. And look, we've just had a really good time here. Me and David Niven. Yeah, that's right. He was mentioned in episode one. That's right. Uh, but look, if you do want to see these early, and maybe you do, you can head over to BigSandwich.co where they always go up a day early. Ben and Lawrence get the edit done and they fly up there. Like they're wearing a couple of brogues. <laughs> you, could have brogues. Said, you could have said jetpack. You could have said jetpack. No, I'm okay. going to say brogues again. Okay, until right. I'm going to find a place for it, Mason. <laughs> sure, okay. But look, and you might be like, well, is it worth even signing up there? Because what's even out next week? Well, here's a hint. But yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff there, including movie commentaries, including our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That goes up there a day early because we're going to be talking about that new one when it eventually comes out in Australia. And uh, and bonus podcast. It's officially an old one now, I think. Well, like, it'll true. never be a new James Bond movie. That's true. And didn't they make that movie 110 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, good. 
No time to bloody. Not enough time. Uh, I Let's can't just say brogues again. Just say brogues. No time to broke. No time to broke. He officially again. has no time to broke because I've not <laughs> seen him in a brogue. Anyways, I want Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Have a great time, everybody. Maybe he's wearing a brogue in No Time to Die. He was wearing that corduroy suit. Sure. The brogue would work for that. I wouldn't know. Okay. <laughs> you think Tom York's ever worn a brogue? I Who? reckon probably. Who are you talking about? The guy from Radiohead. I don't know who that is. Okay, goodbye, everyone. <sighs>